look, across the 15 companies I've consulted for in the past year to improve the RAG applications, every single one has used a Cohere ranker. And so today, I'm really excited to invite Alexander from Cohere to talk a little bit more about how they think about building great RAG applications. When we pull back the veil when it comes to RAG, but we're building a tool that kind of puts everything together and lets you be as tinkery or as little tinkery as you like. I wanted to talk about today quickly how we think about RAG complexity at Cohere and what tools we offer to minimize that complexity for an end user and really like iterate quickly on building successful RAG applications. And so in addition to just giving a, a brief overview of RAG, which many of you probably are, are familiar with already, I'll also be talking about this tool we have in beta right now called Compass that we'll talk about a little more and get a quick demo of. Let's start with RAG basics, right? I've got a, a very simplified overview here of a typical end-to-end -end RAG system, right? Where Let's say it's a chatbot style RAG system where we've got a chat history, we make a request, our LLM might do some sort of query transformation, hit a search query against some information retrieval system, most likely a vector database, let's say, in a lot of the cases that, that you folks are probably working on. Given that retrieved information, that same LLM can use that to ground its response directly. And what, one thing I want to point out quickly here in this little diagram is one thing that we are really bullish on at Cohere is grounding directly on sources. So we train our models to cite directly from the sources that are provided from this stage three here. And that's just like this tiny little toy example here where we actually provide like citations from document trunk one, two, and three in our responses, which we think minimizes hallucinations across the board. So moving on, let's talk about a, a very basic scenario, right? So the simplest way you could do RAG, because here this information retrieval piece is doing a lot of heavy lifting, right? Extracting away a lot of the customization and complexity you can have in a RAG system. But in its most basic form, let's say you had a single document and you want to do question answering over that single document. What you might do is take that document text, chunk it up, naively, let's say, into the token sizes that would fit into some model like Cohere, ReRank V3. You then pass your query into the ReRank model along with all of your chunks and you get a nice answer. It's really nice. That works for a simple case like a single document, but we can start asking more questions, right? We can start asking questions like, what if you want to do question answering over multiple documents with lots of different file types or maybe something even more complex like tool calculators, Python interpreter, right? There, there's more you can do outside of just single document question answering. So why don't we pull back the veil a bit here and take a look at what we can do with RAG. So I want to talk about the general schema that we see with information retrieval right now that's, that goes beyond just the initial re-ranking stage and works to not only maximize speed of response, let's say, but also like really focuses on honing down information to prioritize the most relevant pieces to the LLM. What we first start with is as document corpora grow, we have tons of documents, tons of chunks, right? And we need to be able to filter that down to the re-ranking stage. And so we have this concept of like first stage retrieval, which is built around maximizing recall. In other words, the goal here is given a huge corpus, all we want to do is get the relevant information in some large top K, right? We don't care necessarily about how it's ordered when it comes back. We just care that we're paring down, let's say from a million documents to a thousand documents. And those thousand documents are maximized for recall, right? So they're, they are relevant to the query. This is really great because it's faster production use cases. We can like pre-compute indexes on before we actually do query time. We also have like very efficient interaction in simple cases with like dense vector retrieval where we're really just doing like the inner products. And there's lots of technology out there built around this kind of vector retrieval, right? Places like QDRAN, Pinecone, they're all building optimizations around making this type of retrieval as fast as possible. Outside of just vector retrieval, there's other things to try, right? There's sparse retrieval as well, which kind of works more on a typical keyword matching objective where that's something closer to TFIDF, if you have something like that. BM25 is another very strong, what we call like lexical method to do this kind of first state retrieval. Dense vectors is what I was already talking about, where we have something, some vector in some dimension, let's say 1024 dimension, dimensional vector, where we're calculating some sort of inner product to get a similarity metric. We also have some other technology like sparse neural vectors 
like Splayed, which I won't go too much into detail about now, but if you're interested, there's a lot of good papers out there discussing the Splayed method. Anyway, outside of the drawback of, or rather, these vector methods have an issue about like information compression, especially towards like a limited context window. When we do this first stage retrieval, we need to be like smart about how we chunk our documents to maximize like information interplay. Because you can imagine a scenario where you might have a long list of things that are exclusions from, let's say like a employee handbook about benefits and the exclusions are this long list that don't apply for your benefits, right? If you don't chunk things up smartly, you could have one chunk that has your exclusions with the first five lists or items in the list where the next 10 items in that list don't have any interplay between the fact that those are exclusions at the end of the day. We need to be a little smart about how we structure information in this first data retrieval. But what we can do to like really maximize, maximize relevance to uh, our LLM is the second stage retrieval, right? Which is re-ranking. I think you folks have probably come across this already, but given the top K chunks that we just re retrieved from that first stage retrieval, we want to now do a cross attention calculation where we're actually doing a direct attention cal calculation between the query and the context of the chunk to surface an even smaller number of extremely relevant chunks of information to the original query that are also ranked in terms of the relevance as well. It's really strong. And again, like I said, if you're building a proof of concept, you can skip the first stage retrieval and go straight to re-ranking because you don't really care about speed. It's not a production application, but generally these are slower, but obviously much more precise since they're trained on maximizing this precision of ranking information. Additionally, we do have a constraint for neural math, uh, like neural ranking methods that we still need to chunk information to properly fit that information into the model itself. But generally, re-rankers have a larger context window than for stage retrieval algorithms. Let's jump into generators really quickly. This is fairly straightforward. Given what we get out of the first and second stage retrieval process, we feed that into your LLM of choice. And hopefully that LLM has been trained to a site from sources and produce an answer. One thing I want to mention quickly is RAG, I think, even as generator context length gets longer, obviously we've seen context length get longer and longer. I think RAG will always have a place, at least in the immediate future, just because of a few things. These are, there's more reasons than this, but the two that I want to prioritize it is positional bias is still like a really big thing in long context models. There's a, some research around it. Lost in the Middle was a paper from a few years ago examining how placing documents in a large context length changes the answer quality, plus a lot of other research. That's a great paper if folks want to read it. But generally, the gist here is that given that you could pass in a thousand documents into a large context length of a million tokens, but eventually there is some loss of focus from the generator itself, where in a RAG setup, if you have this kind of information filtration system, you're always focusing on the most relevant information and not adding distractors. And then additionally, adding chunks directly in some format, especially with our models, allows the model to cite directly from those chunks, which helps you minimize hallucination and also tie information sources directly back to the chunks that were where they were extracted from. Hey. Are your RAG applications falling short despite using the latest frameworks and models? You're not alone. I'm Jason Liu, and I've helped a dozen companies improve their AI applications. I've developed a systematic approach that delivers results. If you want to check it out, join my free six-week email course and learn the techniques I use in my own consulting practice. That way, you can stop guessing at what works and measure what matters. Just check out improvingrag.com. So Compass is putting this all together, right? Introducing a lot of this complexity, right? When we pull back the veil when it comes to RAG, but we're building a tool that kind of puts everything together and lets you be as tinkery or as little tinkery as you like. But basically when we think about end to end RAG, it's truly a sum of all its components, right? You have pieces you can modify and customize at every step of the pipeline and it'll build your own setup. You have to control that and that's fine source tools like Mama Index and Langchain uh, have a lot of like really great tooling built around this already. And if you want to get started and if you want to tinker, that's really great. Compass goes a few steps further where we basically provide all of these tools plus a nice SDK wrapper and a good amount of secret sauce that we've been working on internally to maximize this kind of idea of smart chunking that I was talking about and which embedding models work best in which scenarios. Anyway, that's the main gist of Compass. And I'll just give you guys a quick 
demo here and it is pre-recorded just because we're still in beta and I wanted to make sure that everything worked properly. The directory of financial documents in the form of PDFs. This could be anything from um, 10Ks, 10Qs, 8Ks. The gist is that I've got a lot of financial information across multiple different documents, potentially even document types that I want to synthesize using something like an end-to-end -end rag pipeline. Now, Compass allows us in one single SDK and just a few lines of code to parse all of these documents in a bulk fashion using state of the art techniques that include computer vision models or OCR amongst other things and an indexing pipeline as well that is obviously proprietary, but involves things like lexical indexes, dense vector indexes, sparse vector indexes, really combining this complexity we've already been talking about in Forge. Why don't we take a look at the code that we might use to upload these documents? As you can see, like I said, really simple, just a few lines of code, let's say about 10, right? And we use the Compass Client SDK plus the Compass Parser Client SDK to do both these jobs where we have the parsing step and then an indexing step after the documents have been parsed. So I'm not going to run this code now because I've already uploaded it. I do promise that it's quite fast in this batch upload setup. Why don't we come back over to our directory and take a look at some of the documents we have. So in this example, I want to take a look at an ID. Within 10 case, and we, we've got item 8, which is where companies will often put their financial information. And item 8 is usually the section of 10 case that people really care about. In this case, for 2023, we've got revenue numbers for the past three fiscal years, but let's say I want to look further back, right? Let's say I want to look at something like 2018 and compare and contrast revenue numbers between those fiscal years. So notice that we also have a 2018 10K, right? And similarly in Animate, we do have this information. And of course, I knew where to find this. Most people who know how to read a 10K will know how to find this. But for someone who's not well versed in 10Ks and doesn't know which of these hundreds of pages to look through for this information could be a really good start to ask a generator in a RAG pipeline like Commander Plus where this information lives, what this information is to get the juices flagger. So why don't we come over here to Coral, which is our interface for communicating with Commander Plus uh, and Commander R. And you'll see down here that I already have a connector set up to our Compass Index. And this is just one way we make integration super seamless with our generation models, but I won't go too into depth about how that works. Instead, why don't we ask this question that we were just talking about, right? Where we're comparing revenue figures from 2018 to 2023. All right, and let's see what the model says. It's going to start thinking and it should come up with a few queries to ask of this index. And now it's going to retrieve from that index and synthesize all that information into a nice little answer. We've got our answer. Like we already saw in item eight, we had that 36.4 billion number and then 51 points for 2023. And the really cool thing about Command R Plus is it's trained to cited sources. And so that maximizes clarity and minimizes hallucination. And we can see exactly where this is coming from, which is really nice. But why don't we take it a step further, right? So like I said, we're trying to get the juices flowing. And this was an easy kind of layup question, but we might do something more complex where we really want to dig into the multi-document reasoning capabilities that Commander R Plus and Compass is able to do. So we might ask something like, what are three main reasons that revenue increased over the five year period? And so Commander R Plus is going to come up with another set of queries that it thinks it should ask of the Compass Index, right? So reasons for Nike revenue increase 2018, 2023. So yeah, now it's going to give us a nice little explanation of what it thinks after reading a few of these sources on how revenue has been trending over this five year period. And the same thing again, which is really nice uh, about Grand Rapid Plus, I'd say, is this citation component where we can literally look in and say, okay, Jordan was mentioned X many times in the 2023 10K, which means probably a pretty big component of revenue for that fiscal year. Anyway, that's the demo. I just wanted to get the juices flowing on exactly what we've been talking about building up to in this workshop with kind of stepping out of 
simpler rag cases where we might be doing single document question answering and really leaning into more of this complexity where we've got multiple documents that we want to reason over, synthesize, and produce like meaningful content with citations. I hope that was informative and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. That's the demo. I know we're running very short on time. I do have a quick, this will be very quick. I just want to revisit what we were talking about with the original diagram of how we view RAG. I want to talk about where this is headed next, right? Where we can view the exact same structure, but revamp each of the actions in that kind of flowchart to be much more generic. And instead of working like directly with simple information retrieval, we can turn this into any tool request. Instead of query transformation, the LM will identify a series of tools that it should use to retrieve the answer, right? So that's, it could be a search engine, which is just this, the kind of original information retrieval step, but it could be something more complicated, a Python console, calculator, any API, right? Like a weather API or something. Instead of just thinking about this as documents coming back, which could be like any tool result. And the same kind of concept applies where then we, the model is still trained to cite directly from each of these tools that it uses to get to the answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more, check out improvingrag.com. We're going to talk about the foundations and not frameworks. Over six emails, you're going to learn how to overcome absence blindness, as well as how to fine tune language models, understanding diverse query types, improving multimodal RAG, and ultimately smart question routing and we'll build a UX that collects user feedback. Just check out improvingrag.com and fill out this quick email address at the bottom.